This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. BetterHelp is the world's largest therapy service, and it's 100% online. With BetterHelp, you can tap into a network of over 25,000 licensed and experienced therapists who can help you with a wide range of issues. To get started, answer a few questions about your needs and preferences in therapy. From there, BetterHelp can match you with the right therapist from their network. You can talk to your therapist however you feel comfortable, whether it's via text, chat, phone, or video call. You can message your therapist at any time and schedule live sessions when it's convenient for you. If the therapist isn't a good fit, you you can switch to a new one at no additional charge. With BetterHelp, you get the same professionalism and quality you expect from in-office therapy, but with a therapist who is custom-picked for you. More scheduling flexibility and at a more affordable price. Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash cinemasins. The link is in the description. I'm sorry, were there zero logos before this movie? Did we just head straight into the story without the need to marvel us to completion before getting started? That's amazing! I'm taking a sin off, but if you try some sort of cold open bullshit that forces the marveling into the middle of an already running narrative, just be ready for the consequences! This opening is truly heartbreaking and is almost worth a sin off, but then I realize how unfortunate it is the rest of the runtime is devoted to day glow CGI shenanigans and terrible Thor jokes. The contrast is off-putting and honestly a little infuriating. Burying a body in the desert like this will last an hour max, and then someone will find it, and then the police get involved, and then your own brother is like, yeah, he seems like the murdery type, honestly, and then come the lawyers and their insistence to stop talking about it on your YouTube channel, and oh, sh Oh, it's one of mine. <laughs> Having a harem of flower beings. I know you're a god and everything, but that is a lot of statements to satisfy. Our life is lost, but our faith in you never wavered, and now we await the promise of the eternal reward. Look, I'm just gonna get this out of the way here. Bale is maybe the best thing about this entire movie. Of course, the way the movie completely wastes and belittles the performance later is also maybe the worst thing about this movie. So the potential sit-off could just go f off while the ding orchestra gleefully plays. We just vanquished the holder of the Necro Sword before he could harm any other gods with that cursed blade. Giving away the one way to kill you to a humble servant you're about to royally piss off. Go to eternity. Expositional necrosword voices are so expositional that they literally list the steps of necrosorting like their instructions on the side of the mac and cheese box. You were warned, Marvel! You were warned! Sure, maybe Thor was born to be wild, but even babies shouldn't be subjected to this level of horrible CG representation. Another time, he loved a wolf woman. On a woman wolf? I'm sure Thor and the wolf woman are having a howling good time, but really, what's in it for the woman wolf here? Her needs should be considered as well. But Thor's one true love was an earth woman named Jane Fonda. If you think it's funny when Korg says the wrong name, you'll be laughing for at least five minutes of this movie. Also, this expositional directorational previously awning goes on for all the some time. And that guy! That guy and discount Craig Ferguson. You must hurry, okay? People are dying. See you down there. <laughs> At some point you cross over from comedy to Old Spice commercial, and this movie completely underestimates how little I want to watch a hundred minute Old Spice commercial. Okay, fine, movie completely underestimates how little I want to watch this hundred minute Old Spice commercial. I am good! Ah, uh, you got sap all over it! For a battle that Thor just said he had to hurry to because people were dying, movie sure does feel like it has time for some Groot and Rocket Picker bullshit. Ah, Gooskin scum! That's Booskanist. This our most sacred shrine and he desecrates it. Twitter. He flew on Stormbreaker to get down to the battlefield, so why didn't he keep it on him? Where would he have even put it once he got down here? There are people trying to kill you, man, along with your friends. Keep the f***ing axe on you at all times. Van Damming the Booskans is the new Jumping the Shark. Going directly from Thor's wacky fun time playhouse into stage four cancer treatment, there's tonal whiplash, and then there's tonal irreversible spinal detachment. Interstellar? Uh, no. That movie explains everything really clearly. <laughs> Wait. Was that a joke? The idea that Interstellar explains anything clearly is clearly a joke, but the fact that this movie doesn't clearly explain if this explanation is clearly a joke is clearly a sit. Gene, it's stage four. I have like, how many stages? Four. That we know about. We got cancer jokes, y'all. What's next for this guy? Trying to make Hitler funny? I will figure this out by myself. Well, myself in this Skarsgård cameo, but no one after that. We wouldn't dare play the music, but just want to point out that this is the second GNR song being played, and it's not the last. However, they failed to play the entire Appetite for Destruction album, and considering how much GNR is in this movie, that feels like a misstep. Smell like a king, because you're worthy. 
Old Spice. I legitimately had no clue earlier when I made that Old Spice crack that this movie actually was an Old Spice commercial. And now I'm adding a sin because I feel like I accidentally manifested this odiferous product placement. Casually naming your ice cream shop after the thing that stole five years from half the population. I mean, if you're going to make light of half the population's trauma, at least make sure it's a pun. Like a t-shirt place called Infinities. Or a pot shop called Infinity Stoned. Sure, the Matt Damon and Luke Hemsworth cameos in Ragnarok were kind of fun, but when you bring them back in the next movie, they're no longer cameos and have just become part of this universe, and are a lot less special and no longer funny, which seems to be a pretty major theme running throughout this movie. Also, I have questions about this acting troupe, since Jane mentioned both Event Horizon and Interstellar. Uh, we know Sam Neill and Matt Damon actually exist in this world, so are these identical lookalikes, or are these A-list actors slumming it in New Asgard? I am Hella! Goddess of Death! Alright, I've had enough. Now you're just getting too much Austin Powers gold member in my Thor Love and Thunder. I broke your hammer! Time to die! My cross! Ending the play on the second act obstacle introduction. Also standing ovations. Jane has been standing there the whole time. So why wasn't Mjolnir reacting to her until after the crowd left? And how does Jane even get the hammer out of the case without alerting all of the f***ing security guards standing around here? Movie chooses to just skip over that explanation and I want to know. Also, little known fact, in the original language Mjolnir actually means convenient plot device to be used anytime a story needs an easy turn. You can squeeze a lot into two syllables in Old Norse. Look at all of these gods murdered. Yes, Thor, we got it from the blatant distress call that was basically like the god butcher is killing so many gods he's called the god butcher because of all the god butchering can we mention he goes by the name the god butcher goodbye old friend and that's the part where the guardians of the galaxy were a crucial and indispensable part of the story has come to an end it's something i could have said before this movie even started who or what is that and more importantly why didn't we get to see the amazing fight it must have taken for discount nux to take him down oh i I hate to break it to you, but for a warrior to get into Valhalla, you have to die in the battle. Thor Odin's son would be excellent at afterlife sins. The God Butcher is coming. He seeks the extinction of the gods. But left me here alive for reasons. The God Butcher decides the best way to use the element of surprise is to create a variety of shadow monsters to wake up the neighborhood as opposed to just targeting the most powerful gods one by one. Who'd you piss off now? Engaging in witty repartee while people are dying all around you. Also known in the industry as MCUing. Well, that guy, you're gonna love that guy. Engaging in pronoun gaming while a movie is dying all around you. I'm seeing my hammer! Instead of continuing to help the citizens of Asgard fight off these creatures, Thor is going up to them and asking if they have seen his hammer. Even for Thor, that seems a little f***ed up. That's right, Jane is Thor now. But how much have we missed of that process and why? Sure, we'd have sinned a tropey training montage too, but for Jane to just show up for an applause break moment for a hero we've literally never even seen is beyond baffling. <laughs> Jane? Chris Hemsworth clearly attended the 1980s sitcom school for reactions to big character reveals. Let me tell you the legend of Thor and Jane. Look, Korg, if I wanted the entire story read to me like a children's book written by Andre Bretton and read by the director of Hunt for the Wilder People, I would have just won the Powerball, used the money to search for the actual Lazarus Pit, brought Andre Bretton back to life, made him write a children's book, and then paid the guy who voiced Mo Warrenson in the Lightyear movie to read it to me. And although they were from different worlds, somehow it just made sense. It didn't. It still doesn't. It never did. And eventually the space between them grew and grew. If you don't have time to watch Marriage Story, just watch this little interlude of Thor, Love and Thunder. A truly devastating look at how relationships end. Try to watch this and not sob. Some really important character work going on here in this movie that totally understands how to balance its tones. Still don't understand how villains that are so motivated to accomplish a purpose that they will do anything to make it happen, decide at the moment that purpose is in front of them to stall, pose, and or showbo. Still don't understand how heroes that are so motivated to apprehend a villain that they will do anything to capture decide in the moment that villain is completely in their hands to throw them across the room, street, and or battlefield. The children! They're taking the children! The children! Who all of you left unattended and vulnerable to an attack or worse. I'm not sure any of you deserve to have children. Also, his goal was just to bear and bomb burst the kids for his master plan. There must be a million better ways to kidnap children than this, and there is no chance I'm Googling to find out what they are. Flew around the world twice. Nothing. Of course you found nothing. From what height and at what speed and at what latitude and longitude did you think circumnavigating the globe a whole two times was gonna do anything? I did not hear a no. Nor did I. Men. Come to daddy. Come on. No need. Hey, there you are. <laughs> okay, that was funny. In a movie where the humor is a bit more missed than hit, 
This jealous Stormbreaker bit is pure gold. This is an incredible bit of whiteboard repiping from Meek here. But how exactly did he know about the God Butcher's origin story in this much detail? Astrid, are you okay? I no longer go by the name Astrid. I'm now known as Axel. Astrid Axel thinking they have time for this. Sorry, the writers of this movie thinking that they have time for this. You know, the good news is you're Asgardians. So if you die, you'll end up in Valhalla. Oh my god, go away. I'm just trying to figure out if none of the characters are treating any of this as seriously. How exactly are we supposed to? <laughs> what group of scared children chooses to stand in unison and slowly zombie walk to the person that could help them? How many catchphrases have there been? A lot. Exact conversation I had when my friend tried to get me to watch the WWE somehow makes it into the script. Having seats that are this easily removed from an amusement park ride. You moved on quick, didn't you? <laughs> You're some piece of work. You can play Jilted Lover all you want, Thor, but you two clearly already had an open relationship. We all saw how happy you were when Mr. Rogers handled that neighborhood. Character looks at themselves in the mirror in an effort to generate a backstory montage cliche. Means you pretty much have to die in battle. It needs to be devastatingly painful, otherwise you don't get into Valhalla. But now there's a pain scale for getting into Valhalla? These Valhalla rules seem more complicated than they need to be. A hand grenade? No, it's a portable speaker. This movie spends so much time being not funny, it's not even funny. If you don't mind keeping the sink thing under wraps. But why? The story would go like, hey, Jane got irritated and destroyed her sink. And then Thor would be like, that's weird. Are there any Cheetos left? And I mean the puppy ones, not the crunchy ones, because f*** those. So, you still rollerblading? Who f***ing cares? What a neat story. Oh, it's the God Butcher. Remember him? He shows up every half hour or so to remind us he's in the movie. And each time, it's with a different tone, just for some fun variety. Where are the emotion gods? Mm, don't ask. Again. You mean don't ask again. Don't tell someone to not ask something they've already asked. It's annoying and requires a time machine, which they likely do not have. If your mouth and nose have to be this close to your feet and toes, don't you think you might take better care of them? I mean, you're a god, right? Certainly you can afford a podiatrist. Amazing that those emotion gods you happen to grab cloaks from have the exact size chairs that each of you need. Is convenience an emotion? I tell you, one time, now you chat up, you be quiet because you are this close to being uninvited to the orgy. Russell Crowe showed up on set and was like, I'm doing a thing. And then Tiger was like, good news, this is doing a thing, the movie. And Russell was like, here's my thing. And then Tiger was like, whoa, you are doing a thing. Well, I'll go for it. I got 27 other projects I'm currently producing, so I don't have time to argue. Remember when Thor watched his brother have the life choked out of him? But hilarious back tattoos are hilarious, am I right? So chill, baby cake. Chill, baby cakes. It's not a rude and nudie festival. Says the god who just said, Where are we going to hold this year's orgy? As part of today's agenda. Eternity is a very powerful being at the center of the universe. This movie alternates between hardcore expositional explanations and frivolous nonsense so much it might as well be my dad. And now for a fight where the good guys pummel and slice countless faceless guard gods into golden showers of arterial spray as if any of this means anything. Oh, I'm, I'm perishing! The movie will take exactly 31 seconds to undo this death, breaking Chewbacca's record by a good five minutes. That's the sound of lightning. Am I supposed to feel something about this? Is this supposed to be some sort of 30 second vengeance quest that I'm supposed to celebrate? Am I supposed to actually believe he killed Zeus permanently? This moment is played so big, but everything about its setup, payoff, and consequence is so very, very small. Now you got my six. My leg for it. So I got properly naked, which I'm okay with. Jane? I was okay with it. Cork? I loved it. This movie is more like a series of SNL sketches than a movie, and not the cold opens either. Those sketches that they bury right before Weekend Update, because they were on the fence, but they performed okay during dress. You killed Zeus. I mean, that may or may not be catastrophic for the whole universe, and sure, the entire God Kingdom is probably in Hunter's Down. But... Will they, though? Because they just sat by after Thor killed Zeus and let Thor and his crew escape from Omnipotent City. So, honestly, they didn't seem that concerned about the whole thing, which is f***ing odd. You know what? I think it's time for your first beer. Wait, what? I had assumed this whole weapons love triangle bit was meant to play on romantic tropes, but what's with this first beer thing? Is it supposed to be his kid? His pet? His evangelical friend from college? Why is he giving his weapon its first beer? Space uh, dolphins. What? <clears throat> this, you should see some space dolphins. If they're anything like Earth dolphins, then I'll pass. Why do most people not realize how awful and mean dolphins really are? They bite frequently, are sexually aggressive, they actually enjoy torturing their victims, and they're always testing out new ways to hunt and kill their prey. They are a f***ed up species, and we need to get the word out. Think about all that next time you're watching Flipper. Oh, brother man, you look so hot. I wanna get in your rocks. I love Korg. We all love Korg. 
but I don't love that when Valkyrie said only essential items were being brought on board, one of those items ended up being a microphone. That is the song that my dad sang to my other dad when they were courting. This movie has non sequitur itself from a conversation about the life commitments of polyamorous space dolphins to Korg detailing his dad's mating rituals, and I swear this is the movie version of that kid from Jerry Maguire. Cute for a bit, but if I have to hear one more time about the weight of a human head, I'm walking. I don't have cancer. Let's go smash something. Is actually a line in this movie. You made me worthy. Well, this certainly isn't the place to completely unpack that big ball of unhealthy relational codependency. My worth is only in you bull. But yeah, well, it's a big ball of unhealthy relational codependency. My worth is only in you bull. Since the invention of the kiss, there have only been five kisses that were rated the most uninteresting, the most skippable. This one left them all behind. The movie really went all in on those goats, didn't they? Okay, this entire scene is spectacular. I wish it was in a better movie, sure, but I'm having eyegasms and the sin removal is just automatic at that point. Well, at least Gore's a good MCU villain and left some expositional materials out for us and our heroes. And the Indeed, and no one should be surprised by this. Thor even mentioned this is a real possibility earlier, so why is Jane going full Akbar on this when they should all have been cautiously aware already? Who tell me why you just threw Stormbreaker out the window? It was really more of an open air skylight than a window, so maybe you should be a little clearer on your defenestration declaration. You really have to stop meeting like this. You mean meeting where he easily gains the upper hand on you in such a way that I continue to wonder why he needs such an elaborate trap to get Stormbreaker when he could apparently just take it from you? Because hard agree. Choose love. Call the axe. Rejected body spray slogans. I want to kill this guy. So do I, but we have to take him alive. Sure, 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 but do you want to run that axe somewhere out of range real quick? You know, since that was the whole point of the trap and all. Nothing more exciting than watching an action scene full of actors having to fight off CGI monsters that look like they came off the set of Lavalantula. I mean, if I told you this was a made for sci-fi original and you didn't know who Chris Hemsworth, Christian Bale, Natalie Portman, and Tessa Thompson were, you would totally believe me. <laughs> oh, thank you, Mr. Guy. This screaming goat somehow knows that this random rock is part of someone he or she needs to save, and that's only the 176th most unbelievable event to have happened in the last 80 minutes. Stop pretending to kill people, movie! You're like the boy who cried homicide! I like to draw attention to the fact that Gore will now acquire Stormbreaker by grabbing it really tightly when Thor activates the Bifrost. So, yeah, I'm not sure any of the planning ever mattered. Also, if the axe can go to Thor whenever he calls it, then why doesn't he just call it back after Gore grabs it? I don't care how common superheroes in their superhero getups are in this universe. Scenes with this kind of juxtaposition between an armor-clad Thor trying to have a serious conversation with an everyday citizen like this doctor will always crack me up. What's the point of more time? At this. Because I love you. The question, would you prefer a shorter amount of high quality of life or a longer amount of low quality of life, is a really nuanced and fascinating philosophical and emotional discussion. But this movie never even explores it. Instead, Thor just wants the opposite of whatever Jane wants so the movie can have its precious third act conflict cliche and then get back to the surrealist fight scenes and goat jokes. All you have to do is destroy that sword. It's your source of power. Oh, is that all? Then perhaps this is information that you could have brought to his attention yesterday! Do all gods automatically know how to travel with another god's weapon? Because if that's the case, then all these weapons are the same, and that's pretty f***ing boring. Way to ruin the fun of mythology, Marvel. Oh wait. Looks like mythology was never all that interesting. Carry on then. Eternity. Yep, apparently its location is easily enough known, and it has a giant, obvious, insert Bifrost here symbol on its chest. So the fact that no one has captured its one-and-done power before now is the true eternal question. Hey, kids! Literal deus ex machina! I sure did think this MCU movie was about to pulverize a bunch of innocent children, so imagine my utter shock and surprise. We're gonna sneak our way towards Stormbreaker. Which is kind of impossible after making the kind of grand entrance Thor made. And I understand he had to save the kids, but he has to know that by doing that, he exposed his presence. Also, why are the kids even here? Gore kidnapped the kids so Thor would come to him, but once he got Stormbreaker, he didn't need the kids anymore. I guess maybe he didn't want to kill them, but I don't understand why Gore wanted the kids as traveling companions. Either. Hey, don't forget you're Asgardian kids. I'm not. I'm just a liking kid. I would give all the sins back if we found out this was Thor's kid from his affair with the wolf woman and have Thor come to this realization and then scream, I've abandoned my child! They're getting closer. Hurry up. How are they not already there? That is not a lot of distance for the Lovecraftian shadow creatures to cover. Today, 
is a day that will go down in history. A day when a movie asked you to believe that a bunch of untrained kids jacked up on special lightning juice defeated an army of shadow monsters. A day when you had to make the choice, does my disbelief really suspend that far? A day when movies finally said, no brain necessary to proceed, carry on without them. Today will forever be that day. Whosoever holds these weapons and believes in getting home, if they be true of heart, is therefore worthy and shall possess, for a limited time only, the power of Thor! It's amazing how Thor has these random powers whenever it's convenient to have them. This is almost as dumb as that giant cape Superman created in Superman 2. I said almost. Wow, it's really cool to finally see a giant battle like this because we haven't seen one since, well, Thor the Dark World. Oh, and of course, the Avengers. The Avengers Age of Ultron, Avengers Infinity War, the Avengers Endgame, Black Panther, Captain Marvel. I'm just going to assume Wakanda forever. You know what? F*** off with these battles. We've had enough. If this is possible, nothing means anything anymore. And why has it never been used before in other dire situations? At least they aren't just punching each other. Well, s***. Look, this little girl dressed up like a princess gleefully ripping apart shadow monsters is just, well, so f***ing adorable. I don't know what it says about me, but I'm going to give a son off. Thirdly, eat my hammer! But how exactly does that work? You can't actually eat a hammer. Like, if you say eat shit, it's not pleasant, but you could definitely eat shit if you were forced to. And you might think I'm just being way too literal with something the movie intended to be ridiculous, and I would just like to say welcome to the channel. I hope you stick around long enough to try some of the Bifrost cake I made last night. There's really nothing special about it, but it does include two different flavored frostings, and felt on topic. Also, eat my hammer. So Jane throws the hammer to break the sword, and then calls the pieces of the hammer to envelop the pieces of the sword, and then uses lightning to mold them all together, and then slams it down in a way that destroys both the hammer and the sword. And my question is, how does anyone know how to do any of this? Why does it always work? She won't be alone. Holy sh**. Is this movie trying for a face-off ending with the kid of the antagonist becoming the kid of the protagonist? Because I think this movie is trying for a face-off ending with the kid of the antagonist becoming the kid of the protagonist. Also, couldn't Thor potentially save Jane from dying here as well? Maybe only one person gets a wish granted, but wouldn't he at least try? Couldn't he convince Gore to wish for all beings whose names rhyme with Thor within a 300-foot radius to receive one revived loved one? You got a loophole, that sh**, man! I think I figured out my catchphrase. What is that? Okay lost in translation in your catchphrase. Let me tell you the legend of the space viking. And let me tell you to shove this narrational epilogue up your stony ass. A little someone who turned him from sad god into dad god. This means that Thor will either be an absentee father or this kid will have to be in any movies that he finds himself in in the MCU's future. And this is a preemptive sin for whatever nonsense happens because of that. But to those who know them best, they are simply known as love and thunder. Roll credits. Wait, they're actually rolling credits. Do we still send it when it's used as an actual roll credits moment? Hold on, checking this in manual. Yes, there it is. When the roll credits moment directly proceeds to actual credits, remove a sin for proper usage, but then add three more for making us wait this long to fully understand the title. Done. Rule not guaranteed to appear in future videos. When did we become the joke? This might be another rhetorical question, but if you want an answer, I'm going to say when Homer wrote about you. I mean, the Odyssey might be funnier than this movie. Not sure why I added a might there. Do you understand me, Hercules? Do you understand me, my son? The Greek Zeus would not refer to his son with the Roman name Hercules. He would call him Heracles. And I know that's not how it is in the comics, but that doesn't make it any less incorrect. Are you any less of an asshole? You are very welcome here to the land of the gods. Seriously, these Valhalla rules are confusing. Thor told Sif, you have to die in battle to get to Valhalla. Jane died after the battle and from cancer. She neither died while in battle or even from a battle. Does this mean all Asgardians were lied to and they don't have to die an excruciating painful death in battle to get into Valhalla? Because that is all kinds of f***ed up and we don't like f***ed up around here. We, no, this kind of f***ed up. We send the f*** out of this kind of f***ed up. I don't like goats! Thanks again to BetterHelp for sponsoring today's episode. Sometimes taking steps toward mental health can feel daunting, but BetterHelp makes it easier. Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash cinemasins. The link is in the description. Please, I beg you to hear our plea. We are Thermians from the uh. Klaatu Nebula. I would like to rear up and jackknife my legs and kick you both in the f***ing jaw with my foot bone. <laughs> You've grown too attached, damn it. I knew this would happen. Go! Get out of here! Don't you understand? Get! I don't want you anymore! You're dressed like a hot dog. So is that guy. 
And if you weren't there to see me leave, then maybe it was you that left. That doesn't make sense. Hey, how's it going, kids? How do you do, fellow kids? You know, the good news is you're Asgardians. So if you die, you'll end up in Valhalla. Well, you're a sh** of motivation. You should see some space dolphins. You make a, you make a movie called Flipper. Very yes. famous movie. The dolphin is dead. No. The dolphin is dead. No, 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 no. Mr. Woods, I must tell you now. The dolphin is dead. Yes. I am a Zeus. Are you not entertained? Korg is dead. He's not dead. I'm not dead. Today is a day that will go down in history. Three minutes till the biggest battle of our professional lives all comes down to today. Either we heal as a team, 